In about 150 hours from this precise moment, Arsenal Football Club will be top of the league. How long they stay there? Are they able to sustain the course is all up for debate. But what isn't up for debate is that in March, Arsenal Football Club will be top of the league. And I think what we need to do on this video is explore quite how they got there. I think the natural and easy thing to do when you talk about Arsenal is to focus on their brilliance going forward. That effervescent front three, that sometimes a front four, that sometimes a front five, that is capable of overwhelming any opposition. That is the easiest thing to focus on because it's beautiful, because it catches your eye, because the talent in that front five is so alluring. But there is something else going on at Arsenal Football Club. They are so miserly at the back. So, you know, going forward, they're brilliant. They spread the goals out. They score goals for fun. It's goals galore. They aren't reliant on any one individual. And they have a crop of forward players who are capable of playing with one another or instead of one another. It gives the manager such options, such opportunity, such ability to make full use of his squad. For example, Leandro Trossard. He is capable of playing instead of Gabriel Martinelli or capable of playing alongside Gabriel Martinelli. Over the other side, Gabriel Jesus, for example, he is capable of playing with Bukayo Saka, but he's also capable of playing instead of Bukayo Saka. That fluidity up front is something that is so palatable to a manager and so difficult to play against. It's so unpredictable. But look, the dazzling attack that is full of verve, full of life and full of goals isn't the reason that they are on this march towards the Premier League title. It is what's going on at the back. That's right. The reason that they are in such scintillating form is the brilliance of their back line. To put it bluntly, Arsenal's defence is three times better than anyone else's in the Premier League. In Gabriel, they have unleashed a gem. He is undoubtedly one of the best centre-halves in world football on current form. He is certainly the best centre-half in the league on current form. And at both ends of the pitch... He is sensational. I think these words from Declan Rice really does give us an insight into the character and ability of Gabriel. The one who's really surprised me is actually Gabriel. He's so aggressive, so strong, really wants it all the time, never loses a duel. When you've got two centre-backs like that who want it, play aggressive, it really helps give you confidence. So that partnership that Mikel Arteta has encouraged and allowed to flourish is part of the reason. Saliba, everyone knows how good he is. Gabriel, been amazing at both ends of the pitch. But there are other reasons and other metrics why Mikel Arteta deserves an awful lot of credit in getting the best out of this defensive line. There has been a personnel change. Now, look, I don't know if Pep Guardiola is actually the inspiration for this. The way that uh, Guardiola deployed Nathan Ake on that run to winning the treble was inspiring, I think, for a lot of managers. And we know that Mikel Arteta is a disciple of Pep Guardiola. So maybe we have to give a little bit of a nod to the homage from Mikel Arteta to Pep Guardiola in the way that Mikel Arteta has deployed Jack... Jacob Kiwior. In the way that Mikel Arteta has deployed Jacob Kiwior. <laughs> I'll say that guy's name. What's happening, everyone? Do not go anywhere. This is on a need-to-know basis, and trust me, you need to know. Everybody needs a bit of VPN action in their life. Trust me on this. I didn't even know what a VPN was that long ago. I got involved with it, and it changed everything. NordVPN provides a wonderful service. It's so affordable. It's comparable to the price of a cup of coffee. And guess what? One account allows you to link it to six different devices. So you could give it to your mum for access. You could give it to your girlfriend for access. You could give it to your wife for access. You could give it to your dad for access. And you could still have some spare all off the back of one single purchase. There is also absolutely no risk, absolutely no jeopardy, because for some reason you don't like it, for some reason it doesn't quite chime with you, you've got a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you can really experiment, find out, does Nord work for you when you book your holidays? It stops websites tracking you so you do get the best price. Sometimes you might want to watch films that aren't necessarily available in your location. You may want to watch football matches, not me, but you may want to watch football matches that aren't available in your location. It's not possible without a VPN. NordVPN allows you to do that. You will never see that annoying message on Twitter ever again. You know when you want to watch a goal and it says it's not available in your location? It is now. So use my link in the description box below. It's NordVPN forward slash Rory. And if you use that, you will get four extra months 
completely for free. That's nordvpn.com forward slash Rory. The link is in the description box below. Look, Zinchenko got injured. And at some point, that would have been seen as being curtains for this Arsenal title challenge. But Mikel Arteta has got it right. And while I will concede that Zinchenko is a far better footballer than Kirill, I'm not convinced that he's a better defender. And I think it gives Arsenal this resilience. It gives Arsenal this steel to have centre-halves across the pitch in every position in the way that Man City had centre-halves across the pitch in every position. It really does increase the steel. That back line for Arsenal is granite from right back right across to left back. There is so much venom. There is so much ability there. There is so much aggression there. And that is part of the reason that they are so stingy at the back. Zinchenko's a miss. Passes the ball really well. He has a good eye for an assist. But he can't defend like Kiwi But it's not only the back line. It's also the midfield. And yes, you're about to hear something that you haven't heard for a very long time on this channel. You're about to hear some praise for Kai Havertz. This doesn't come naturally. I don't like doing it. But credit where it's due. The way that Arsenal press... Declan Rice and Kai Havertz are part of the reason that Arsenal are so good at the back. The reason why opponents find it so difficult to penetrate Arsenal is due to the intensity with which Arsenal's midfield play. And Declan Rice does not give you an inch. He doesn't give you any room to breathe. And Kai Havertz is very much part of that as well. The intensity with which those two midfielders are playing are part of the reason that Arsenal have only conceded three goals this calendar year. Like, that is actually amazing, isn't it? In six league games in 2024, when the business end of the season is approaching, when everything matters so much, when the jeopardy is so high, in those six games at the start of the year, Arsenal have conceded just three goals. Look around. Look at what their opponents are doing. It's not that Liverpool aren't a brilliant team, but just look at the way that they can see goals. Look at the rate that Manchester City can see goals. Three goals in six games. Really, really impressive from Arsenal Football Club. Listen, you know I'm more aligned to the theory of the eye test. You know I like watching footballers and watching teams play to decipher how they play. But I also think that stats can, on some level, help you understand certain things. And now these stats will blow your mind. Mm. Arsenal's expected goals against is just 0.31 per game. That is obviously the best in the league. The second best in the league is Manchester City. Manchester City's expected goals against is 0.98 per game. So nearly one per game compared to Arsenal, that is 0.3. Therefore, we can deduce that Arsenal's defence is three times better than Manchester City's, and Manchester City's is better than everyone else's in the league. So there's no point in saying that Arsenal have the best defence in the league, because although that's true, it doesn't really tell the full story. Arsenal don't just have the best defence in the league. Arsenal have the best defence times three. Arsenal have three times better defenders than anyone else in the league. Arsenal's defence is three times better than the nearest challengers. If that isn't the platform to launch a title bid, I really don't know what is. Remember that famous quote, goals win games, defences win titles. Just to demonstrate quite how good this Arsenal defence is, when they played Newcastle fairly recently, Newcastle didn't have a shot in the entire first half. That's the first time that's happened to Newcastle for a decade. When you give a side credit for defending so well, and pressing so well. It's important to compliment the whole team. I've already acknowledged the contribution of Declan Rice and Kai Havertz and Martin Odegaard in that as well. Ben White obviously deserves a mention, but it is the entire team. Arsenal are squashing the space. They are forcing opponents into conundrums, into positions that they don't want to be in, into dead ends. And they're doing that by forcing mistakes. Arsenal are making the pitch small. Arsenal's starting position is about as far forward as you can possibly be within reality. Their defensive line is the highest in the league. Watch them line up. Their defence is practically on the halfway line, which means that the entire game is being played in the opposition half. It means that space is tight, and because of the brilliance of their defenders, because Gabriel and Saliba are so confident in their own ability, they aren't fearful of the ball over the top. They also now have a goalkeeper who is capable of playing as a sweeper. So this whole system, this whole defence, is actually a complement to the whole team. It's the front line who start defending. Gabriel Martinelli is as responsible for this as anyone else on the pitch. The pressing starts at the top. And we have to give an awful lot of credit here to Mikel Arteta. And it's working. On average, obviously the sample size is slightly different. But in 2023, on average, Arsenal would concede nine shots a game. This year, it's down to seven. So they are conceding two less shots per game. Which, when you work that out over the course of the season, it's going to be huge in terms of the tally that you ultimately concede. 
A goalkeeper that the manager desperately wanted. A defence so rugged, so rigorous, so stingy. A midfield full of life, full of vigour, full of silk, full of quality, full of goals. And a forward line totally effervescent in its nature, interchangeable and ready to launch a bid for this title. To think that this team is about to deploy its best midfield. Thomas Partey was in action the other night. Are we about to see a midfield emboldened by the arrival of one of the best midfielders in the Premier League when he is on form? It's fascinating what's going on at Arsenal. It's hateful for me to have to say these words, but they are a serious team, a team to be admired, a team capable of winning the Premier League. Mikel Arteta deserves nothing but praise. Incredible. And we have to put it in context. When Arsenal lost those two consecutive London derbies, when they were beaten at home by West Ham and then away at Fulham, I did not think that they could launch into a new year in the way that they have done. That Dubai uh, winter sun really did them a favour, didn't it? I suppose the only sad thing from an Arsenal perspective is, despite being this brilliant, despite being this amazing, despite being this bewilderingly good, despite being this beguiling, I don't know if they're going to win the league. In years gone by, this team would have obviously been champions. This year, who knows? But it is a genuine possibility. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please let me know. Please click subscribe. We are on the road to 300,000 subscribers and it would be an honour to welcome you into that community. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you all in a bit. Cheers.